You're invited with ace driver Leo Gagan around the International Mount Panorama Motor Racing Circuit, Bathurst, New South Wales. That's Armstrong Corner. It's D-Day minus one for the annual Armstrong 500 mile saloon car classic and a compulsory practice lap. This is the cutting and the steepest part of a 600 foot climb to 2,500 feet above sea level. Now the main agony starts. Watch the brakes come on. And remember, in tomorrow's race, the front car will circulate 130 times at a rough average 70 mile an hour. We're through the dipper, now for the punishing S's. Most of the bends are left-handers and you can hear the rubber squeal. You need a first-class car, good gear ratio, lasting brakes, quick reaction, a ton of courage. Now for the long, strong forest elbow. Three point eight miles round on the back straight, Conrad is one point one six, enough to get up to maximum revs more than hundred mile an hour before throwing out the anchors on Murray's corner. Certainly the winner won't come from the faint hearted. A honey to test man and machine. a.m. Saturday and more than a hundred drivers suffering from pre-race tension listen carefully to last-minute regs and instructions. Bob Jane, four times winner, and Peter Manton. Irishman, Paddy Hopkirk and Ian Gagan in light-hearted mood. Jeff Russell, Barry Arendt, John Rayburn. A class win is top prestige in a buyer's market. Lack of confidence keeps out many makes, but it's the one thing evident in the BMC camp. Very obviously they mean business. More than 50 crew led by Evan Green and Ted Hardingham. The team of more than 30 drivers includes Monte Carlo winners Hopkirk and McKinnon, who'd flown 13,000 miles for this stint. Tires take an awful belting and choice, pressure and wheel balance could be the win or lose factor. Top tire manufacturers advise and help. Constant tire improvement comes from this kind of experience. If tyres hold out, the Cortina 500 need pit only once to maintain Ford's front-running reputation. 17 and a half gallons fed to two tanks from above the boot top and the old type filler sealed up. Ford's strategy is again steered by their ace man, Les Powell. Veterans Bill McLaughlin and Jellic Knight Jack Murray pilot one of the 500s, trying to give Ford line honours five out of six Armstrongs. David Mackay was to skipper three Datsun Bluebirds, but they withdrew when practice disclosed wheel nut weakness. Newcomer to World Saloon Car Racing, Japanese Toyota Corona. Foreign cars assembled in Australia were permitted this year, providing 250 had been sold. The Corona is recognized as a serious threat in his class. Polishing eases tension for Alan Mottram. There's nothing left to do on the Studebaker, but Sutherland checks again. These policemen entered a car with 28,000 already on the clock. To conform with regulations, every vehicle must be standard, as sold to you and subject to ARDC scrutiny before and after. Note the blacked out protected headlights as Seaton brings Cortina 11 away from scrutineering. Waiting is nerve wracking but doesn't bother the Finn, Timo McKinnon. Inspired by the drivers from Britain, the Gagan brothers don competitive, certainly fashionable clothes. 8am race day and there's a fire smouldering in there. A challenging atmosphere that says if this is to be Bob Jane's fifth win, it'll be no walk away. On the grid, the more powerful Class D in front. Cars that sell from 1,301 to 2,000 pounds. Studebakers, Cortina 500, Triumph 2000, and Fiat 2300. Class C, 1,021 to 1,300 pounds. This is the class BMC must win if they're to have a chance for first across the line. To do so, they'll have to eliminate Valiant, Humber Vogue, Cortina GT, and Holden X2. Class B, 921 to 1,020 pounds, featuring Toyota Corona, Morris Cooper, Isuzu Ballet, Renault 1100 R8 and a Cortina 240. Class A, up to 920 pounds, Cortina 220, Mini Deluxe, Fiat 850, Vauxhall Viva. This year there will be recognition for first to cross the 500 mile line. 55 cars valued at about 90,000 pounds, ready to do some 27,000 miles in around seven hours. Watched by 25,000 people. All set, get ready, go! A complete traffic jam surges forward in a haze of exhaust and tire smoke. Next few minutes bedlam as they sort themselves out. 
Watch them use the inside grass. This is a place where patience pays off. There's all day to go. Last through, Fiat 850, Heffernan at the wheel. Top of Mountain Straight, Sutherland, Gagan, Needham, Studi, McPhee, Brown and Seaton in three white Cortinas. Jane around 12th as the roaring Maynage heads up for the cutting. An insurance nightmare as each man stares at the bumper bar just ahead. Into the S's, Sutherland, Gagan, Weldon, McPhee, Seaton, Brown. Watch as the traffic jam sorts itself out. around the 100, down Conrad, and Studi 2 has a lead of 30 yards on Gagan's Cortina 1. Then 40 yards to Weldon in Studi 10. McPhee's white Cortina, Seaton in 11, Brown, Lindsay, Jane, Foley and McKinnon. That Barnes in many 27. Mudguard scraping wheel, the only modification. Two still in front, 10 has overtaken Gagan. Then McPhee, Cortina 4, 80 yards ahead of the field. This breakaway was more or less as expected. The duty breakers, knowing they'd spend more time in the pits, trying to get well out in front. They thought those 17 and a half gallons would hold the Cortinas back. But despite 120 mile an hour down Conrad, they're right there, Gagan close. McPhee's boot lid is up will cost him 30 seconds and a thousand yards at least. Little and Pomeroy off to Bathurst. Now Weldon has passed the police duty maker and is setting a fantastic pace. Where they go goes Gagan. The marshal's overtaking flag works overtime as the Coopers show their teeth. Barn, Seaton, Foley, Jane. The three front runners open a longer gap. James Cortina has moved to fourth ahead of Foley's Cooper. Next, Barnes, who must be a lap behind after banging that fence, and Seaton running seventh. It was obvious the pace was too hot to last. They couldn't keep it going for seven hours, but it was a battle for supremacy, no one giving an inch. They're lapping 12 seconds faster than last year, and after only half an hour, the police duty baker develops a wobble and uses common sense to make a change. Next casualty, lap 10, Barnes again this time with a busted harmonic balancer. You wouldn't think he could get into a Mini Cooper. Two laps later, real trouble up top. Look at the bank on the right. That's Seaton pulling out and Mini 20 Lindsay on the left. The Mini bounced back from the fence, hit Seaton, then slid back into the hot spot for cars racing out of the elbow. One look at that Mini can cause trouble in a split second. Russell, Triumph 2000, petrifying spot to wait for the green lights. Watch him pour it in and lose some rubber. Down below again, and a broken valve spring puts Ron Clark on his feet. Trouble coming thick and fast. A truck full of men with a busy day ahead. Lap 16, and Weldon has built up a 15-second lead in the big studio, but he's got troubles. Behind him, a battle royal between Jane and Foley. Gagan in one, running fourth. End of lap 16, not yet 10 o'clock, and Weldon pays the price of front running. Flat out everywhere, took a thumping through the dipper and the S's, developed wheel shutter and changed drums for safety. Ten minutes lost. Safe now to look at 20 back of the pits. A lot to be said for safety glass and belts. Out there, the Cortina Mini battles in full swing. Jane, Gagan and Foley, then three more minis, with two white Cortinas believing that the prize is not always to the quickest. Gagan and Foley have swapped positions, but Jane still makes the running. By now, those front runners have lapped the tail three times. The rest have settled down to a class battle. 42 is third class B, but in too great a hurry. And the Valiant finds it tough to sit behind the lark. 
Still they hurtle round, lapping at about 3.14, with Foley trying to get in front of Jane. Next lap he makes it as they pull out of the cutting. Now it's Jane's turn to shadow Foley. Gagan's still third. Look out for the lark. Gave Cusack and McKinnon a tense moment, to say nothing of Fred Sutherland. Two laps later and McKinnon up with Foley in front. Jane drops back for a while. Class B, 40, the Vokas Scott Cortina leads from Mini 37, doomed to wheel trouble. 11.30, in the same class of the three Coronas making their racetrack debut. They topped 100 in the flying eighth and a second, fourth, fifth, class B. The Humber Vogue was in trouble most of the day. He comes back alongside Bill McLaughlin, then 53 third, class A, two other Cortinas ahead of him. Out in front, it's still a changing pattern, although McKinnon stays on Foley's tail. Marchiori in the middle is a lap behind, but Gagan has taken Jane and Cusack. There'll be some changes made. Ian Gagan is not going as well as he'd like to and shoots into the pit area, reporting loss of power. Their Armstrong bogey looms up. He went out again for two laps while pit crew prepared to clean his carburetor and get new plugs. That second stop was seven and a half minutes, a total of ten, or three laps dragged when he flew out again. The public needed a crystal ball to know what was happening around now. McKinnon and Cusack, 30 and 24, shot into for petrol. So did Foley in 29. The Cooper S carries 11 gallons, which means at least one more pit stop than the Cortina. Suddenly, Jane was alone in front and going like a rocket. The road seemed open for Cortina's fourth and Jane's fifth laurel. There's proof that seat belts are lifesavers. Driver not hurt. It was caused by a busted wheel and the passing cars don't seem to be going quite so fast. The prang is a shock for Bell at 32 and a headache for the Mini 44, Harvey Stewart. Nearly 12 o'clock, Jane well clear. A lap in front of three tagging him, Foley, Cusack, McPhee. Eleven's in the same lap as Jane, but further back. McKinnon changed tires and is behind. That 10 minute lag made it hard to follow Gagan's position. Suddenly he shot into the pits again, losing another three minutes with a dropped exhaust pipe. A little over four hours to go as Leo takes her out. wants to get a better view of real trouble. Watch the Viva 58. A frightening sight for Cusack, but believe it or not, no one hurt. Viva la safety belt. Kavanaugh quite okay, but puzzled. Never rains, but it pours. Three minutes later and Jane is out, putting an end to any chance of his fifth Armstrong in a row. He was lapping just over 3.15. Average just around 70 mile an hour. And now serious engine trouble. ARDC boys quickly on the job. He certainly can't stop there. Note how the windscreen popped out. SOS for the tow wagon. That leaves 11, Seaton Bosworth in front, going very steady. Seaton is lapping around 317. Has never been worse than seventh and is a lap ahead of four. Arrival McPhee in second spot outright. More trouble up top. Triumph 2000 rolled in the dipper. Time 12.41, lap 16, nearly halfway. The driver gets through the windscreen. Ankle trouble, but not badly hurt. If you want to modify a vehicle, how about this for head clearance? Goodbye. Genuine low mileage, driven one weekend only. Now comes the Mount Panorama report on class positions. Class A, 54, Morrison Marr are in front, five laps behind Seaton. Firth and Raven, 45, are in the same lap as 54, and these two have been having a ding-dong battle since the start. Both confident they have the measure of Mini Deluxe, Fiat and Viva. For third, a rare go between Cortina's 47 and 53. The circuit is 3.8 miles and all lapping under 3.39. Ferguson Smith, 42, leads Class B, but not by the length of pit straight from Cortina 40, Ferguson Scott. Behind them, in third spot, is the first Toyota, number 36, Abbott and Sampson. Ford and BMC efficiency and determination were clear from the start, but it was around lap 70 that the Coronas drew attention. All three were topping 100 down Conrad, and reliability had brought them to 3rd, 4th and 5th Class B. Brakes holding well and are adjusted before getting back into the fray. When Manton took over from Foley at 12.21, they left 24 Cusack in front of Class C. His best lap time was 3.13.9, a tenth of a second slower than the Gagans and a fifth behind Foley Manton. But this front running position was short lived. There was an obvious petrol leak which took him into the pits, lap 75. That left 18 in front of Class C, Stanley and Satch. The Cusack fuel tank was siphon trouble. Cost 12 minutes. Time to change plugs. When he does get out, he's got to really move. The Foley Manton car is third Class C, but moving up. Hogkirk is a lap behind. Here comes Seaton, first D class and outright. Still purring round in 317. But three and four is second, and ready to take the Ford pattern if Seaton has trouble. 
Creditable third class D, veterans McLaughlin and Murray around 319. Faster than several younger men in the same car. Age brings wisdom, but it doesn't destroy skill. That sounds glorious. But on the fence is always a dry argument. Want to make friends? Bring glasses, pipeline, pressure gauge, temperite, and a non-drinking driver. He can always watch the race. Every now and then they get a rude awakening. Stuart did this. Must have seen that keg. How blase can you get? Han or Forrest been up to the bank. Haven't a clue what he stopped for, but he shouldn't really you know. There's cars everywhere. One safe place. 18, Stanley Satch lost it, trying to keep ahead of Manton Foley. 23, Humber Vogue, Barnett or Johnston. Forgotten something. We should stress that constant braking have put a film of rubber on Forrest Elbow. A likely place to bend one any minute. There he goes again, becoming the Vogue, but a dangerous habit. Cooper 33, Clark or Prisk, headed for the pits with a broken valve spring. Transmission trouble? No. A visit to the boot for Shoesmith, Fever number 52. Every year the Armstrong gets faster and tougher to win. This year, wheel trouble was the most common. Certainly it held back the big duty breakers. You've got your troubles and I've got mine. Out in front, the picture is still the same. Two Cortinas, Seaton and McPhee, both trouble-free. Then the Minnows. Since lap 57, there was drama in the Gagan brothers' struggle to peg back that 10-minute delay. Circling around 3.14, they were gaining nearly five seconds per lap. Then, at 2.42, he was reported for engine running during fuel intake. If correct, there was only one penalty, disqualification. Around 3 o'clock, he was black flagged. Told to protest, out again, but minus another 40 seconds. Not enough time, even if the protest upheld, and it wasn't. Probably Seaton Bosworth could have gone faster, but they had a good margin on four, about a lap, and were taking it quietly. This is the peak tension time. McPhee knows the position clearly. Maclack Murray and Manton Foley right on his hammer. There's drama behind him, D-Class 2. The lone Cortina, Volker Scott, still in front by a minute only. His second pit stop, and that car's thirsty. It's not Robinson Crusoe. Behind 43 Toyotas running second, third and fourth. An hour to go. 54, Morrison Ma, C-Class, lying second to Firth Raven, 45, which must pit any minute. But these two waste no time in there, both 54 and 45 in the same lap. Behind them, two more Cortinas, 53 and 43. Viva, Mini Deluxe and Fiat 850, not really in the hunt. Manson Foley, third outright, leader Class C, second Little Pomeroy, 21 on the same lap. Hot Kirk McKinnon having a great battle with Stanley Satch, 18 for third. Class D is all Cortina, 11, 4, 12. Kagan still flying around like a man possessed. The outright position, 11, 4, 29. Seaton's taking it easy to ensure no accident. A lap ahead and the end near. Bart Mogridge waits for number 11. There he goes. That's the end, 4, 16. 24 minutes faster than last year. 42 finished out of 53. Outright Seaton, McPhee, Foley. D class, Cortina 1, 2, 3. C, Cooper S, 1, 2, 3. B, Cortina 1, Toyota 2 and 3. A, Cortina 1, 2, 3. Congratulations for 29-year-old Barry Seaton, the man who was second last year, and for his new co-driver, Midge Bosworth. This time, a perpetual Armstrong trophy for outright winner. A popular win, Modest Midge and Barry Seaton, polio victim as a child and staunch motorsport man for many years. The class winners, Scott, Volkers, Manton, Foley, Seaton, Bosworth, Rayburn, Firth. Those laurels, provisional only. All cars impounded, sealed and taken to Barry Gurdon's service floor. Here they're pulled apart to make sure they conform in every way to the maker's handbook. ARDC men check and measure camshaft lobes, valves, flywheel, jet settings, and a host of details. For Barry and Midge, it's the last hurdle before they collect some 800 pounds. We stress the importance of tires. On a left-hand circuit, the worst strain comes on the offside front. This one stood the whole journey. Reflect for a moment, and you'll realize what it means if a new spare is still in the boot at the end. A thought for John Rabin on the right. He's off to Britain to drive for Sir Gawain Bailey. A deserved opportunity, and all in the game wish him well. 
now for the battling mini. Hopkirk McKinnon made third class C behind the little Pomeroy 21 and just ahead of Stanley Satch 18. These cars help make the 1965 Armstrong a thrill to watch. Finally, a word of praise for the three Coronas. Second, third and fourth in class B behind that Cortina. Remember, speed costs money. In the low price classes, the medals go to stamina and reliability. The scrutineers were satisfied. Once again, the year of the Cortina. Three classes, seven places, outright line honors for the third consecutive year in the Armstrong, one of the world's toughest saloon car races. the 1965 Armstrong was memorable. Most interesting so far. It takes a thousand and one to stage it to find one outright winner. As we go home with Barry and Midge, a thank you to them and to the other 999.